Hello, and welcome to Crooked House Gaming. Here at Crooked House Gaming, we would like to explore the gameplay of simulation games, usually through a series of Let's Plays. In this episode, we will explore the gameplay of Democracy 4. Democracy 4 is a political sim that lets you choose the role of a world leader and govern a country. If this sounds like something that you'd be interested in, be sure to hit that like button. And if you're new here, welcome, and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Today, we're going to be starting a new series, and we are going to be playing as a new country. We are going to be playing as... Canada. Canada is a federal parliamentary democracy with a constitutional monarchy. The Prime Minister is elected. A formal colony of Great Britain, the new nation of Canada first became a democracy in 1867. In 1919, women won the vote, and, but it wasn't until 1960 when all Canadian citizens irrespective of ethnicity, could vote and universal suffrage became law. The population of Canada is 37,742,154 as of 2020. The size of Canada is 9,984,670 square kilometers. The religion of Canada is 69.3% Christian, 24.9% unaffiliated, 1.2% Islam, 1% Hinduism, and 1.4% Sikhism. The exports of Canada are oil, wood, refined fuel, gold, metals, and gems. World leader, the longest coastline, quality of life, transparency of government and business. National obsessions are maple syrup, ice hockey, politeness, and diversity. In this series, we will be playing as the Prime Minister of Canada. Let's see what the game generates as our party. We are going to be the Radical Reform Party. Our Opposition party will be the Civil Rights League and the Citizens Alliance. We are going to do compulsory voting. There will be no mandatory voting in Canada. We will have a three-party system and we're going to leave everything as it is. Let's start the gameplay as Prime Minister of Canada. Congratulations on your election victory. Welcome to your new job as Prime Minister. The lives of all 37,742,000 citizens are now in your hands. As you will imagine, there are a number of situations and concerns that you will need to deal with as soon as possible while keeping an eye on the long-term improvement of our citizens' quality of life. Plus, do not forget that you face re-election in five years, so you will need to monitor the opinion polls and party membership. Good luck! At the recent election, your party won a majority of 10%. This will give you some political power to implement your policies. So we are going to be entering our first term of our first year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's begin our term in office. We are starting with 14 political capital. Let's see what our issues are. It seems that we have inherited an obesity issue in our country. Obesity. Too many of our citizens are eating badly, possibly due to an abundance of junk food at cheap prices. This will have a knock-on effect for the lifespan and healthcare costs. We also inherited respiratory disease. Asthma and other lung diseases are a serious problem amongst our citizens. Not only does this obviously severely impact their quality of life, but it also reducing our productivity and filling our hospital beds. Poor air quality, possibly caused by factory pollution and car fumes, together with smoking, are likely the cause. We have an uncompetitive economy. Our workers lack relative productivity and competitiveness, causing our exports to fall and flooding our country with cheap imports made overseas. With lower wages and harder working and more technological savvy employees. This is having a negative effect on our economy as our local companies cannot compete globally. We also have pollution. Without enough measures in place to regulate what gets pumped into our air, we ended up with high levels of pollution. This has affected our health levels and quality of life. Not as surprisingly, the environment environmentalists are especially upset. Environmental protests. There's a widespread movement with environmental protests all over the country driven by concerns about climate change and pollution. Protesters are disrupting daily life by blocking roads and city centers to draw attention to the cause. We have 14 political capital to spend. It seems like pollution could be possibly affecting our respiratory disease and this is also going to be affecting the environmental protests. Let's focus on pollution starting our first term as Prime Minister of Canada. Reform Forestation. This is 100% popular with the votes. As a measure to combat CO2, tree planting is relatively uncontroversial. However, some campaigners suggest that this is treating the symptom and not the cause, and that CO2 should be reduced at the source, not captured afterward. We also export wood, I believe. This would help us in the long run. It will also create jobs. Let's put four political capital in this. We will plant 60 million trees a year. Let's apply the changes. We have 10 political capital to spend. CO2 emissions. The amount of carbon 
carbon we put into the atmosphere, environmentalists and the majority of scientists agree that limiting our CO2 emissions is a vital step that we should take to fight climate change. Failing to control our emissions can lower our international standing and affect our foreign relations. A booming economy, if unchecked, will produce more carbon, as will high level of car and air travel. There are a vast range of different strategies that can be employed to minimize the level of CO2 emissions. We could do a carbon tax. Carbon tax. A carbon tax is levied on all emissions of carbon dioxide, thought to be the main cause of climate change. Tax is effectively a pollution tax and a way to make those individuals and industries contribute to climate change pay for the damage they cause and reduced emissions. Obviously, the tax is popular with environmentalists and can also lead to more energy efficient economy. Let's put some points in this. Go up to seven. We'll increase our energy efficiency. The environmentalists will be happy. It will reduce our CO2 emissions. Oh, it's also going to affect our GDP and air travel but let's apply the changes we have three political capital to spend car emission limits setting legal limits on exhaust fumes helps to reduce air pollution especially in cities but it's unpopular with motorists who look upon it as yet more bureaucracy and tax we need to improve the air quality of our country and help respiratory disease of our citizens let's put two political capital into this and apply the changes we have one political capital left to spend healthy eating campaign through cooking shows, advertisements, and specials in newspapers and other media, people are encouraged to be aware of what they eat, what the results of unhealthy food are, and how to cook a good meal. This raises the overall health of the people while reducing obesity. This is 50% popular with the votes. We have one political capital left to spend. Let's go all the way to maximum and apply the changes. We have zero political capital remaining, and thus we are at the end of our first term of our first year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's hit that button. We're about to enter the second term of our first year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's see how we did. The GDP is up. Unemployment is down. Support democracy protesters. There is an urgent policy question that requires your immediate attention. Street protests are taking place in a foreign country with historical ties to us. We do a lot of profitable trade with this country, but their government is authoritarian and we face pressure to openly support the cause of the street protesters. Support the protesters. Do we believe in democracy or not? This should not be complicated. If the government is showing authoritarian tendencies and we believe the protesters have a point, then we should stand by our principles and back them. Not keep quiet because it earns us money in trade deals and to look the other way. Make no comment. We would be angered if we faced protesters in our streets, as all democracies do, and foreign leaders started openly backing the protesters against our government. It would be terrible for our diplomatic relations with this trading partner if we took the side of the relatively small number of protesters in the street. Let's make no comment. Comment. Situation imminent. Our data is showing that we have a potentially bad situation. Technology backwater on our hands if we do not act soon. Polls report our government is not popular amongst its citizens. Only 4% of them intend to vote for you in the next election. Cabinet report the loyalty of your ministers can best be described as loyal. Their effectiveness is generally to be considered adequate. I'm going to leave my cabinet ministers alone right now. Budget report we have a small budge budget deficit of $2.78 billion, which we need to address at some stage. Economic forecast good news. The global Global economy is doing well and is having a positive effect on our GDP. Let's continue. We have 14 political capital to spend. We have a technology backwater and that is creating an uncompetitive economy. Our workers lack relative productivity and competitiveness, causing our exports to fall and flooding our country with cheap imports made overseas with lower wages, harder working and more technologically savvy employees. This is having a negative effect on our economy as our local companies cannot compete globally. Technology, a general index of the level of technological sophistication of the country, including the percentage of citizens with internet access, high-speed broadband, as well as technological understanding of students and the capabilities of industry. A high technological index boosts the international competitiveness. Tax incentives may be required to attract a high-tech industry. Perhaps we could do technology grants. Technology grants. The government can provide state funding to encourage business to invest in new and exciting technologies. Although this helps gives us a competitive advantage and can create jobs, it can be argued that it is an unnecessary distortion of the market. We are going to go to medium. We're going to spend four political capital. Going to increase our technology a bit. It will increase GDP slightly. Let's see if I can budge that GDP more. I cannot. Let's do seven all the way to the end. It'll cost a lot of money, but let's apply the changes. We have seven political capital remaining. Telecommuting or working from home is seen as desirable because it reduces the pressure on the transport infrastructure and can be an improvement to people's quality of life. It is also welcome
welcomed by parents. This policy offers tax incentives to companies for supporting this option. This is 100% popular with our voters. I'm looking at this to increase productivity in our country. It's gonna cost millions of dollars, but we're gonna do it to maximum and we'll apply the changes. We have five political capital remaining. We could do some intellectual property rights. Intellectual property rights establish the protection of innovative ideas by granting the creators a period of monopoly over their use. Advocates for intellectual property rights claim that the invention is incentivized by allowing the owners of ideas to benefit financially. The aim is to promote creativity and progress. However, in practice, the use of these rights tend to favor the resource rich. You can pay for the rights, registration, and enforcement. We're going to use two political capital this and raise it to the end. We will apply some changes. We have three political capital remaining. Let's put some political capital in adult education subsidies. Adult education subsidies are a way to encourage people to retrain and continue their education after they've joined the workforce. This includes evening classes and distance learning resources. These schemes help to raise the overall education of the workforce. We need to get out of our technology backwater and we are going to train some of our adults. Let's put two political capital in this and apply the changes. We have one political capital remaining. Let's do something with our obesity. Cycling campaign. This campaign highlights the many advantages that bikes have in our cities. Whether it is to get through heavy traffic with ease, to save money on fuel, or to prevent unnecessary pollution, the bike offers many things for many different people. They just don't know it yet. We could put our last political capital in this and go all the way to the end. Let's apply the changes. We have zero political capital to spend and thus we are at the end of our second term of our first year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's hit that button. We are now entering the third term of our first year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's see how we did. Stricter driving tests. There is an urgent policy question that requires your immediate attention. There are calls to toughen up the driving test regime to ensure new drivers are much better prepared for road conditions and to improve driver safety. Toughen up the tests. The current driving tests may have been fine when cars went 20 miles an hour and before six lane highways existed, but times have changed. Drivers are increasingly distracted by mobile phones and can drive staggeringly fast vehicles in all weather conditions with virtually no experience. For the sake of many children run over and killed each year, we need to get tougher tests. Make no change. There's no need for change. If anything, cars are getting safer each year thanks to modern technology such as collision detection and crash safety systems. It already costs a fortune to take and forever to pass the driving test. This would just be a burden on new young drivers. No, I believe in toughening up the test because we are for the radical reform. Let's select that. Parents are happy at plus 8%. The motorists are unhappy at negative 5. Situation imminent. Our data is showing we have a potentially bad situation. Water shortage on our hand if we do not act soon. Probably, oh, the plant-based diets is upping this. Plants have to be watered. Polls report. The government is not popular amongst its citizens. Only 7% of them intend to vote for you in the next election. Economic forecast. Good news. The global economy is doing well and is having a positive effect on our GDP. Cabinet report. The loyalty of your ministers can best be described as loyal. Their effectiveness is generally considered to be adequate. Budget report. We have a small budget deficit of 2.77 billion dollars which we need to address at some stage let's continue we have 14 political capital to spend let's take a look at our ministers yeah the welfare minister we're having problems with him he is a parent and a liberal and we did some things for parents so let me should see the potential ministers Ryan Baker he's for the capitalist and for the poor he would bring us 2.2 political capital okay, let's fire him for one political capital and let us hire oh it's welfare Let's hire Sophie Lewis. Well, that makes the economy and the tax minister upset, but oh well, we'll just move on. We have 13 political capital to spend. We have a water shortage issue. Compulsory water meters. The installation of water meters for every household and the subsequent charging for water based on consumption is one very effective method of reducing water usage and preventing water shortage. Although it can be a long, slow process to install meters for every house in the country, let us implement this. We are going to be facing a water shortage. Let's go all the way to the end and apply the changes. We have seven political capital remaining. We're going to do some reforestation to address our pollution issues. It will also address our respiratory disease, our CO2 emissions, and our unemployment. It's 100% popular with the vote. Reforestation as a measure to combat CO2. Tree planting is relatively uncontroversial. However, some campaigners suggest that this is treating the symptom and not the cause and that CO2 should be reduced at the source and not captured afterward. Use four political capital and we are going to plant 100 million trees a year. We are going to apply the change. 
cash. We have three political capital remaining. Health food subsidy, a tax incentive that makes healthy foods such as fruit and vegetables cheaper than high fat and high sugary foods. Seen as incentive to eat well rather than a punishment for eating badly and thus less punitive than on the poor than a fat tax. Let's implement this. It will lower the price of food. It will lower obesity. It will increase health. It will increase plant-based diets. This will lower our obesity significantly and that will affect productivity. Let's apply the changes. We have zero political capital to spend. We are at the end of our third term of our first year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's click that button. We'll now be entering the fourth term of our first year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's see how we did. Ooh, health is down. Tinderbox. High winds down power lines last year which were cause of the worst wildfires on record with storm forecast. Power plants have planned outages to prevent another inferno. Major donor abandons your party. It looks like you've not been keeping an eye on the opinions of our major financial backers. One of your wealthy donors has just cut their support for the party. This may have an effect on our ability to campaign effectively unless we can find a replacement donor and keep them. This has affected the public's views on us as a strong leader at negative 20%. Situation imminent. Our data is showing that we have a potentially bad situation. Media monopoly on our hands if we do not act soon. Polls report the government is not so popular amongst its citizens. Only 19% of them intend to vote for you in the next election. Economic forecast. Good news. The global economy is doing well and is having a positive effect on our GDP. Cabinet report. The loyalty of your ministers can best be described as loyal. Their effectiveness is generally to be considered adequate. We have a small budget deficit of $3.48 billion, which we need to address at some stage. Let's continue. Let's take a look at our cabinet ministers who are not happy. This economy minister is much more effective than our tax minister. So we could fire the tax minister. We see the potential people. Oh, Ryan Baker. Yeah, I wanted Ryan Baker. Let's uh, fire her. And let's hire Ryan Baker. This really affected our economy minister and it has also affected the public service and the transport minister. We have 13 political capital remaining. Technology colleges are specialist schools with a focus on computer literacy, biotechnology, and similar subjects. These state-run colleges receive special funding from central government in order to encourage a greater level of technological literacy among our future workforce. Let's implement this. We will go all the way to the end on this. We need to address our technology backwater. Let's apply the changes. We have three political capital remaining. Press freedom. The freedom of the press is the freedom of communication and expression through electronic and published media. It is closely linked to freedom of speech, which is the fundamental human right to communicate opinions and ideas uncensored. Curtailing press freedom negatively impacts democracy, but affords the censored control over access to information. Let's go all the way to the end and let's apply the changes. We have zero political capital to spend and thus we are at the end of our fourth term of our first year as Prime Minister of Canada and we are at the end of this episode. Thank you so much for stopping by our Crooked House. If you like what you saw, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you want to follow our future episodes. It really helps us out. Have a great week. See you soon.